Today, uh, Amber Blight with BioFirm is going to talk about uh, the feasible small scale anaerobic digestion case study, the Ecoluno digestion system. So, with that, all set. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about our small scale digester. Um, I'm the last presenter, so stop me at any time and ask questions if you have questions. It's pretty informal. Um, a little bit about who we are. Biofilm Energy Systems um, is located in Madison, Wisconsin. We've been there since 2007. We're a subsidiary of the Disman Group, and we're one of the leading technology providers for both wet, dry, and hybrid systems in North America. One thing that is unique about our company is we provide a performance guarantee. A lot of technology providers don't provide this. So if your digester isn't producing what we say it's going to produce, we'll come in and reevaluate your system. If we still can't get it to produce what we say it's going to produce, we'll write you a check for your losses. I'm just going to skip over the company stuff. So we do offer several different types of technology. Um, the top one is dry fermentation. It's a batch system that looks similar to garages. You'll load them up with material, um, shut the doors, let them ferment for 28 days, and then unload the material. We had our first dry system installed in Oshkosh, Wisconsin in 2011 at the University of Wisconsin. Um, the middle one is the CSTR, what most people are familiar with, the large tank digesters. And then the bottom one is what I'm going to be talking about. This is our small scale digester. Um, um, so it's located in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. It's on the university. Um, this digester is a high solids digester, meaning the material that goes in it needs to be stackable. So right now they're taking grocery store food waste, they're taking yard waste from the city and from the university. Um, they're taking animal bedding from the local farmers, and they're also taking food waste from the cafeterias. They're on a mission right now to teach the students how to divert organics from the landfill, so they have a program called Feed the Beast, which is a special garbage can for organics. And it's kind of nice because it shows the students, you know, when you're diverting it, it goes into this digester. The digester produces renewable energy. It also produces compost. So they see the whole cycle, and it, it, it's all about teaching people and showing people to get them to move forward and be more sustainable. Um, this digester takes in about 8,000 tons per year of organics, um, and it produces 370 kilowatts continuous. Um, the organics themselves produce about 220 kilowatts. We take uh, additional gas from the wastewater treatment facility next door to ramp it up quite a bit. So this is pretty old, but it's still the same. Um, the dairy industry is a huge industry, $26 billion um, a year per state. Uh, in Wisconsin alone, we have over a million uh, head of dairy, and that brings in almost 20000 a year in economic activity um, compared to Ohio and Florida. This is just to show that a majority of the farms are going to be small farms, um, less than 100 head. This is the same exact thing. This is a newer slide. The majority of the farms that exist in the, all of the United States are going to be between 100 and 200. Um, typical digesters are designed for the large farms, 1,000 heads and up, but we see a need to accommodate these farms as well. In Wisconsin, we have uh, several small farms, typically 100 head to 150 head, and we're finding phosphorus issues, phosphorus in the watershed, the water is turning green, it smells horrible in the summer, and it's not the large farms that are contributing the majority of the phosphorus, it's um, too many small farms um, congregated in similar areas. So we came out with this small containerized digester to try and handle the manure and better manage the phosphorus. This is kind of just the same thing. Three out of five of the largest dairy states in the U.S. are 100 head um, size farms, Wisconsin, New York, and Pennsylvania. Those are also the leaders in digesters as well. Um, most digesters are um, accommodated to accommodate large farms. Um, we saw an opportunity to fit these smaller farms, so we came out with Oigolino. Oikolino is a small containerized unit. It's slightly larger than a shipping container. 
it's going to be 11 by 11 instead of your typical 8 by 8 or 8 by 10. Um, this is an all-in-one unit, so the CHP, the digester, are all in one container. Um, this box you see on top is a biogas storage so that we can t continuously feed the CHP. This is a plug flow digester, so it moves in one end and comes out the other. Um, and it's slightly high solids. It takes the solids, total solids content of 15 to 17 percent. So we have over five applications of this in Germany right now, and typically in Germany um, it's on a farm, and they're also adding just additional substrates such as corn silage. Um, but these units do come in sizes from 18 kilowatts all the way up to 100 kilowatts. So this is kind of an interview. You can see the digester. Um, we have paddle mixers that move it from the input to the output. And then the containerized uh, CHP, all the electricals, all the controls are on the other end. So this end is going to be the digester, and this end is the CHP. A lot of this is just repeat. Again, um, so typically, depending on how the farm manages their manure, if they're going to scrape it, then typically they would load it into a feeding system where an auger would move it into the digester. If they're pumping the manure, then they would just pump it directly into the digester. Um, just kind of a schematic. This is pictures of the inside of the CHP unit, all of the controls, all the monitoring systems, and then the engine you can kind of see. I'm going to move along to our first case study. Um, we just installed the first one of these small-scale digesters on a small farm outside of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Um, he has a 120 head dairy. Uh, we oversized his digester because it is a pilot project. He's working with the University of Wisconsin to put in this digester to test it out and see how well it operates. Um, so we're going to test other substrates in there, see how much uh, we can load it with food waste um, versus manure, what the maximum capacity is before it gets too toxic of the system. Uh, currently he's putting in about 2,000 tons of material per year to this digester, and he'll be able to produce about 55 kilowatts continuous. That's over five times what he uses on his farm. So we have a contract with our electric company to sell it back. Uh, when we first approached Dave about this project, he was very weary. He did not want a digester. Everyone he knew who had a digester it didn't work well, things went wrong. So we took him over to Europe and we showed him the ones that were in operation. His first concern was extra maintenance, extra work. He already had enough to do on his dairy and managing his land. He didn't want to handle a digester. And he was worried that it wouldn't add value to his farm, that it would be just another project and a failure like several other ones he had heard about. But after seeing it, he changed his opinion quickly and he hopped on board. Some things that we've learned from bringing the first one into the U.S. is Germany operates very different than the U.S. The regulations, um, permitting, certifications um, are very different. Where in Germany it can be an all-in-one container. In the U.S. you have to separate the CHP from the digester has to be 15 feet away because technically the CHP is a piece of equipment and so you have to uh, permit it differently um, versus the digester that could be permitted as a building. Um, sourcing equipment, everything that we put into this digester we wanted it to be US compatible, all the pumps, all the electronics, um, so basically we changed the whole interior of the thing to be adaptable for the U.S. And right now we're actually opening up, on the verge of opening up, a manufacturing facility to start manufacturing them here in Wisconsin, oh, back in Wisconsin. Um, we're going to do that to create jobs and to decrease the price. Right now to ship one of these over from Germany, shipping itself is $170,000. It's outrageous. So if we can start manufacturing them here, it's going to reduce the cost dramatically. Um, 
this project that we put in uh, in Wisconsin, we got two grants. One grant from the USDA for $150,000 and one grant from Focus on Energy for $125,000. Um, this brought the cost down dramatically to what he, the farmer could afford to put in place. Yes? You mentioned that uh, the animal digestion to help solve the phosphorus problem. I want to know how that's done. The way I look at it, anaerobic digestion causes the release of ammonia. And you end up with an unbalanced fertilizer. You put that digestate on the land, it doesn't have enough nitrogen in it to balance the uptake of the plants, so you end up with an excess amount, excess amount of phosphorus on the land, which is just the inverse of what you say. I agree. Um, tell that to the DNR because they're not that smart. But um, we've added processes to the end of it, a, a polymer process that grabs the phosphorus and extracts it, extracts it from the liquid mineral. Um, it's pretty expensive. But it's part of the university's project, um, so they can afford it, they get grants. Yes? Yes, yeah, one answer is that with digested spread it over more fields. More people are willing to run out into the spread the more to take it further because it doesn't smell. That may be the rationale for why the phosphorus can be claimed on the house for the phosphorus. Now that's the poultry poultry industry solution. Build a taller smoke stack. <laughs> yeah. I missed the cost of this thing. Um, right now, shipping them in from Germany, they're a little under a million. They're about nine hundred thousand. Our goal is to get them down to five thousand to eight thousand per kilowatt. So about half that price um, at about five hundred thousand is the ideal price. That's why we're starting up the manufacturing facility to cut costs wherever we can. Yes. To sort of mulling this over, here's the kind of low energy. Potential from manure. Wouldn't these maybe be a bigger seller to grocery stores? Yes, um, I targeted this more for manure because I thought that's what the audience would be. But yes, um, correct. Um, right now, on the East Coast, they have a huge push to divert. Um, if a grocery store produces more than two tons per week of organics, they have to divert it from the landfill. And this would be a great application for that. Um, our smaller unit, uh, about 1,000 tons per year, is all it needs to produce 35 kilowatts continuous. And so, But you still need a place to handle this and operate it. So it, it can't necessarily be on site. It's a little too big for that. You'll still need land. And it, when it comes out of the digester, it's still liquid, still has high BODs. It still needs to be managed in that aspect as well. What's the footprint? It's uh, 11 foot by 40. 11 feet wide by 40 feet long. Could you put a boiler? Yep, you could definitely put a boiler. Right now, the big hype's CNG, so I don't really see CNG applicable for this little biogas, but. Some people just like hopping on the bandwagon, so that's also an option. Yes. 